Hello Pirates, welcome to Anime No Me, your favorite crew. In today's video, we'll be talking about a huge revelation from the One Piece manga. During chapter 1129, we discover the betrayal of one of the members of the Straw Hat, Grand Fleet, who, in truth, never really wanted to ally with Luffy. So, before I reveal everything, click like, subscribe to the channel if you're new here, share the video with your friends, and lastly, comment which member of the Grand Fleet you think is the traitor before I make the big reveal. Now, let's get into the video. Guys, the chapter begins exactly where the previous one left off, with the townspeople in a panic as they see fire coming from the room, visible through the cracks in the mirror. Chaos ensues as fear spreads among the inhabitants. Then, the sun god enters the diorama and finds the skeleton of the ear god in the forest. It is revealed that the true name of the ear god was Glutabunny, a fierce and feared carnivorous rabbit. The sun god, upon seeing the destruction, becomes extremely furious and angered, expresses his rage at seeing his temple and his servants hurt. The sun god then indignantly proclaims, how dare you ruin my room, I mean my temple, and hurt my servants. Meanwhile, Luffy, with a concerned tone, tells Iscat, the gigantic cat, to be careful not to destroy the buildings, because he doesn't want the Lego work that the sun god appreciates so much to be ruined. It's an attempt to keep some order amid the chaos. Nami, always strategic, quickly memorizes the map and, without hesitation, discards it. She then turns to the group and explains the layout of the immense room. If you look closely, Nami clarifies, the clouds are just cotton hanging from the ceiling. All we need to do is keep going straight. We're already halfway through this country. The chapter then reveals the full view of the diorama. It takes up two-thirds of the giant room, while the sun god's temple, located on a huge wooden table, occupies the remaining third. In the center of the diorama is Big Steen Castle, surrounded by the the town, the forest, and water from a spring. The great tree, still incomplete, is fixed to the mirror at the back of the room, only partially visible. The sun god tries to capture them with an iron net that emerges from his staff, but Zoro and Sanji manage to destroy it with ease, continuing to advance to the other side of the Lego country. Usopp, meanwhile, fires his green star skull bomb grass and destroys the mirror, but to his surprise, the wall behind it remains intact. Amused by the situation, the sun god starts talking about how exciting everything is for him. He expresses his satisfaction in seeing evil heroes and battles in his miniature world. This is fun too, the sun god says excitedly. Now there's evil heroes and battle stories in this world I created. He then suggests that they all stay there forever and become his live doll. Speaking in a peculiar way typical of Wano Samurai and using many otaku terms, the sun god continues. Powerless dolls fighting against fate. This is true fiction, pathetic yet brave. I'm going to cry. How wonderful it was to have you in this nation. Luffy Tasso, Zoro Tasso, Nami Tasso, Uso Tasso, San Tasso, Cho Tasso. Nami, intrigued, asks the group, wait, why does he know us? Chopper, confused, asks, what's a Tasso? At that moment, Luffy prepares to act, saying determinedly, all right, I'm going to punch a hole through it now. Using a bit of Gear 4, Luffy stretches his left arm and activates his Gear 4 transformation. But this time, only the arm transforms instead of his entire body as it used to. Meanwhile, Nami, irritated by the sun god's behavior, comments to Usopp, hey, Usopp, a natural disaster is nobody's fault, right? Usopp, a little uncertain, replies, I think so. Earthquakes, floods, or lightning. No one's to blame for those things. Nami, with growing anger, continues. That guy, he really forced us through all this horror. He made me so mad. Usopp, hesitant, tries to reason. Yeah, but the giants, Sanji, for his part, joins the conversation, crying with an angry expression, creating a hilarious scene. Sanji exclaims, I totally agree. Nami-san, I completely understand your anger. I've been furious this whole time, too. That guy, he switched Nami-san's clothes. I'll shred him to pieces with my kicks. Nami tries to calm Sanji, replying, no, Sanji, it's not that serious. But on, I'm sure judgment will come from the sky. Upon hearing this, the sun god becomes apprehensive. The story then shifts into a flashback, revealing that the sun god is actually Ro, the navigator of the new giant warrior pirates, the crew led by Hadruddin. For those who don't remember, Rode was born in a village in Elbaf about 63 years before the current events. His birth was celebrated at the beginning of the 12-day fast leading up to the winter solstice. And perhaps this is why he was was chosen as the sun god. Many years later, Rode and three other giants joined Hadruddin in his quest to revive the giant warrior pirates. The crew became mercenaries for Buggy's Delivery, the pirate expedition organization. And during their service, the crew became the top five earners of the organization, even gaining the rank of S-class soldiers. However, during the Dressrosa arc, Rode's captain, Hadruddin, was one of the duelists in Dressrosa's Colosseum, competing for the Mera Mera no Mi. He appeared trampling on a bull that Luffy had befriended, and to get revenge, the Straw Hat neutralized that massive giant with just one blow, thus beginning a friendship that, after the events of Dressrosa, led to him asking to join our favorite Straw Hat's crew. But moving forward in time, after the Egghead arc, 
dark, the Crow Mugen had brought the Thousand Sunny to Road, who, surprised by the unconscious crew, comments, Mugen, what have you brought me this time? What? This is the Straw Hat crew? Weren't they supposed to be with the giant warrior pirates? They seem to be in a deep sleep. Don't tell me their journey to Egghead went through the Sleeping Fog area? Then he recalls the moment when Hadrudin joined the Straw Hat Grand Fleet, expressing his dissatisfaction with the fact that an Elbaf warrior, known to be the strongest, would submit to a human like Luffy. Day foo foo foo. I was never happy with that idiot Hadrudin making me a subordinate of this guy. Back in the present, Nami and Zeus form a massive storm cloud over the diorama, and Nami attacks Road with a powerful lightning bolt, exclaiming, Here we go! Right, hey! Meanwhile, the city is in shock, and people scream in terror as they see their god being attacked. In the final double page spread, Luffy prepares to punch a hole in the wall while his crew watches him expectantly. Luffy shouts with a smile on his face, Gomu Gomu, no! With a powerful punch, Luffy destroys the wall, and the crew, along with Ice Cat, finally jumps out. The group celebrates the feat, exclaiming, That's it! We made it out! They have finally freed themselves. And for those who didn't understand why Road decided he would never side with Luffy and the Straw Hats as a subordinate member of the Grand Fleet, just think about why the new giant warrior pirates were formed. This crew was born trying to recreate a crew from the past, the giant warrior pirates of the sea. Basically, it's a story that starts over a hundred years ago, when two giants of legendary strength and status, Jerul and Jorol, commanded the crew of giant pirates. These two became practically giant heroes, highly respected, but there came a point when they decided to pass the baton, and that's when Dory and Broji, the giants who became friends with Luffy in the Little Garden, took over as captains. One day, these two new captains, Dory and Broji, hunted two sea kings and both were the same size. However, a little girl named Yuki, in her innocence, asked which one was bigger. This led to a fight between the captains, and they began a duel that would last a long time, the one we saw in Little Garden. While Dory and Broji were dueling in Little Garden, the rest of the crew had to move on, and without their leadership, the world government appeared and captured the pirates. They were sentenced to execution in Marineford, and it seemed like everything was going to end badly. However, at this critical moment, Sister Carmel, a human, appeared and literally saved the giant's lives. She argued that killing the pirates would provoke a giant, literally, war between the giants and humans. The execution was canceled, and the crew was sent back to Elba. That's why we saw giants alongside the government. Because after 50 years, two of the giants, Oimo and Kashi, who didn't know the whole story, tried to return to rescue their comrades, but ended up being captured by the Navy. They were deceived by the Navy into working for the world government, thinking they were helping to save their friends. In the meantime, young giants who had heard about this crew decided they would be like them, forming their own group, where at some point, Hajruden joined with four other giants in the hope of reviving the disbanded giant warrior pirates. But what do you think about this? Did you know the full story of the giant pirates? And what do you think about the betrayal that hit Luffy? Comment below. That was today's content. We hope you liked it and want to share your opinion on the subject. Don't forget to share the video, give it a thumbs up, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care and stay amazing.